Petron, the, the Eurozone. I don't know if you want to opine at all, and then Andre, on whether this relatively good performance uh, is sustainable, if the policies they have in place you think are the, are the right policies, and whether this uh, especially uh, good performance in terms of somewhat above trend growth but very low inflation is going to continue. I just want to manage your expectations. I'm not an economist, and I had prepared myself to discuss the state of the financial system, although I'm not totally ignoring we'll, your issues. We'll. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think uh, the Eurozone, as you rightly say, is, is a good surprise of the year. I mean, it's, it's even ahead of the US in terms of uh, expectations, which is unheard of. I mean, in so many conferences I've joined in the last five years, it was never to happen. Here we are, it's happening. So I think we, we should really celebrate this. On top of that, being French, I have a special tenderness for what is going on in our country. I think there are two reforms happening, and it's all the easiest as these reforms are being kind of pushed by some uh, tailwinds, so which is really uh, a, a, an important factor. So I, I think we, we, we should really, uh, I mean, enjoy this, and it's, it's more and more healthy. I mean, investment is picking up. It's not just the usual consumer-driven growth. It's also more and more driven by investment. But here again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, sorry? Oh, sorry. Oh, you really have to eat the microphone, okay. So I was first saying that it's true that the headlines, are, as John rightly said, are, are good. And, and they are good enough that we should celebrate. Because for 10 years, we were miserable talking about the Eurozone. And for once, I mean, it's, it's okay. But I don't think there is any reasons to be complacent as well. Uh, because there are a number of pending issues. I, I've always tended to uh, not to overreact to the uh, global perspective on Euro European banks. I think there are some European banks which are in trouble. Uh, it doesn't mean that the European banking system is in trouble. And I'm a little bit tired of hearing all over the world this kind of global comments on the European banking system. I mean, there are issues in certain countries. I mean, we know some of them, some north, some south. Uh, but it doesn't mean that the system is broken. This being said, uh, I think we still have an issue which I'd be happy to address when we discuss the financial system, which is the profitability of the banking system. Uh, I, I think the, the, the banks and, and the, re the recent, the recent uh, sets of results, in particular from, from the largest banks, be it the Deutsche Bank or Societe Generale or Credit Agricole or BNP or, 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 or the British ones, are uh, somewhat disappointing. Uh, and it's a mix of uh, market activities not returning as much as in the past, and probably the lack of volatility, but also growing regulatory pressure, etc. You have, uh, I mean, the impact of low interest rates, which, I mean, you cannot ignore. I mean, you can try to charge more fees to the clients, but it's very difficult to move from, a, a, I mean, a, an interest margin driven business to a fee driven business. when. I mean, consumers are quite reluctant to pay at the end of the day. So you see the retail banks are really yeah. suffering uh, immensely, actually, and it's, it's going to last. And on top of that, although it's difficult to quantify, you have the issue of the fintech, which are eating in the, in the fat part of the value chain. So if you add all of this, I think you have a real issue of profitability for the, for the, banking, um, for the banking system. Then I, I think you, you have... I mean, the, the big issue, which is a supposed uh, the trade that, the, or the deal that people expect, which I hope will happen, but I don't think it will ever happen, between France and Germany, where basically you, France say, uh, I'm, I'm going to stick to the 3.0% or below. Uh, I will do my reform. And you, German, you, you stop your obsession with being, uh, with, an, I mean, with, with, a, with an excess in, in your public finance, and you start this uh, disbursing for infrastructure, etc. I, I mean, again, I'm biased because I'm French. I think the French are starting to do their part of the deal. Uh, I don't see the Germans moving in that direction, which I think will still maintain the imbalances, which, is, uh, which are part of the problem of the Eurozone. You cannot have the Eurozone basically serving the current account of Germany forever. So you have to, to, to address this imbalance. So that's, that's one of the issues. The second issue is that we still have issues in the south of Europe, which have not been addressed. I mean, not to discuss Catalonia and its impact, but, I mean, this is, this is really a question mark. Uh, and, and we have some issue in Italy, I mean, political ones and economic ones. Not to forget Greece, which we have, I mean, we've kicked the can for many years, but every July we have a kind of drama to say whether it's going to be all right. So we, we manage it and we push it for another year. So at the end of the day, I, I, I see the glass more than half full. 
uh, but I'm still uh, considering with a, uh, I mean, a, a lot of care the, the, the signal. I, I, don't, I wouldn't call them downside risk, but I would call them uh, not, not uh, alarm, but alert. Just pay attention to this.